Welcome to the class on reinforcement learning and artificial neural networks. In this video, I will discuss n-step TD methods. Remember the problem of the mouse in the corridor? We had to discretize the states and we could discretize with 10 states or we could discretize with 20 states. And then we found that with a standard TD algorithm such as SARSA, information travels back one step at a time from the goal, from the target. Now, the first solution we saw is you work with eligibility traces. However, there's also a second solution, and this solution is called n-step temporal difference methods or TD methods, and that's what I will discuss in this video. Let us recall the framework of standard SARSA. I have an update rule delta q, which is the reward, and then you comp compare the q values. So what does this mean? This is my way to the goal, discretized. I take my action and I want to update q of sa. I, on the way, I collect the reward. Then I take the next action that allows me to have access to the next state action pair. And now I have all the information and I can update Q of SA. This was with the discretization step of 10. Now let's do the same thing with the discretization step of 20. And uh, as a reminder, before I do this transition, let's rewrite this in terms of temporal difference methods. So it was a difference between states, but I can also say it's a difference between this next time step and the previous one. Now let's switch to 20 states, discretization with 20 states. What will happen then? Well, suppose that in both cases, the mouse moves at the same speed. Then I actually compared a position here with there. That means it was a certain time difference. That's what temporal difference rever uh, re refers to. Now, if the rat moves at the same, if the mouse moves at the same speed, then I should actually not compare with the next state, but with the state two steps away, because that was the original original comparison point. And that means. I have a comparison two steps or two step temporal difference, two step TD. And that also means instead of one big reward, I would potentially get two small rewards in between. And now I sum up these two small rewards in between with the usual discount factor gamma. And then I have to compare with a Q value two step downs, but this Q value will come with a factor gamma squared in front. And then this is two-step SARSA. So one-step SARSA, I go from, from a previous state action pair. So I'm, 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 I'm at, at a certain action. I take the next state, I take the next action. And then this is looking one step backwards to update the Q of SA up here. In two-step SARSA, you have to look two steps backward, in three steps SASA, you look three steps backwards, and so forth. Now I discussed Monte Carlo methods. With Monte Carlo methods, you sort of look infinitely far backward, as long as the trial has lasted. And then as, bef as before, we can also look at variations. We can do n-step expected SASA, same idea. And here is the algorithm, the way uh, Sutton and Barto write it. So you move down the state action graph, you take an action, you observe the next state, you observe the reward, you choose the next action. And then you update not the previous state action pair, but a couple of steps before, in fact, n steps before. Standard SARSA would be one step before. Now let's look at a three-step SARSA. Suppose this was my action at time t. So I have here q st at. I move down 
to the next state, to the next action. Then I move down to the next state, to the next action. I move down to the next state, next action. And then I update three steps back the Q of SA. Now, while I collect the rewards here, these rewards come with these discount factors, gamma, gamma squared, gamma to the power of three. That gives my intermediate return G on this interval. And then I set the total target is this, what I get on the intermediate intervals plus the Q value down here, three steps away. And then I do this for all steps and now it gets messy because it will overleave. So I do, this is another three step interval. That's another three step interval. And that's yet another three step interval. And this is how you proceed as you move along. Now let's visualize this in a two dimensional picture, similar to what I'd shown at the beginning in, an, in, in the previous video. Here's the gold state. It's again here. The actual path taken is shown here on the left hand side. If I use one step SARSA and no eligibility trace, I only learn the last transition. Now, if I use 10 steps SARSA, I have memorized, I can update the Q values of all the 10 previous transitions. So I have a memory of 10 QSA of 10 state action pairs. To summarize, we have a scaling problem of TD algorithms. If I change the discretization, things change. And to compensate for that, I can either introduce eligibility traces that sort of amounts to a temporal smoothing with an exponentially decaying temporal filter, or I can use a switch from one step TD to n step TD, and that corresponds to temple coarse graining. So here, the temple for eligibility traces, the temple smoothing window is exponential. And for n step TD, it would just be a rectangular window. And if you do this comparison, you can understand that the two methods are mathematically closely related, just slightly different filters. Before I finish, just a quick detour. I discussed the n-step TD methods for Q values, but you can do exactly the same for V values, in which case the simple graph is just from state action to the next state. Two-step TD also starts at a state and ends at a state, three steps and so forth. And here would be the corresponding algorithm for the V values, n-step TD methods for V values.